Senator Christopher Ekbeyon represents Akwa Ibom North West in the Ninth Senate on the plan of the People's Democratic Party PDP. The former Deputy Governor of Akwa Ibom State in this interview speaks on many national issues, how Nigeria has feared 21 years into civil rule, the nation's economy and the situation of the Niger Delta region, among others. This is 21st century of Nigeria's return to civil rule. In your assessment, where are we? He said Nigerians of good conscience have to evaluate each administration on what they have done to sustain the democratic government. It is not how many years, but what each administration has done to improve standard of living, job creation, poverty eradication, good roads and transportation system, food sufficiency, quality and functional education, and so on. For me, we have 16 years of effective democratic rule by the party I belong to, that is the People's Democratic Party, PDP. But then Nigerians said they wanted change, and when we all and when the All Progressive Congress APC government took over power, they promised us that we are going to be taken to the next level. We are still looking forward to get to getting to that next level. In terms of improving the economy, they told us that they were going to make sure that the exchange rate component, dollar to naira rate, is reduced. People were thinking that magic would come, would be done by President Muhammadu Buhari, but unfortunately, their hope was dashed because as at today, Naira is exchanging for nearly 500 Naira to $1 in the black market. The said PDP was borrowing too much, and today, Nigeria is still borrowing, and even more. Now, the President is seeking approval for a fresh loan of $5.5 billion from international development banks and financial institutions, the IMF, World Bank Africa Development Bank, and the Islamic Bank to cushion the effects of COVID-19 pandemic. So what has changed? He said, Nigeria is still a monoproduct economy. That is why we are always borrowing. It is surprising. Surprising in the sense that we had thought that with the emergence of the APC government and the change, they promised Nigerians that issues of diversification of the economy would have been put into practice, that the agricultural sector solid mineral sector would have vigorously pursued that corruption would have been a thing of the past we were told that if we didn't fight corruption corruption would destroy us but it looks to me like the president has allowed corruption to fight back and today we see cases of some individuals when they were in the pdp and served as administrators of either states or government institutions they were alleged to have misappropriated or mismanaged resources, but when they move to the ruling APC, they become angels. Is that a proper thing? It is a food for thought, and we don't need even know how long it will take the AFCC to investigate such individuals. Yes, it is 21 years of democracy. How effective has the practice been? Democracy is defined as government of the people, for the people, and by the people. So let us look at the level of inclusion by this government. Has this government included all sections of the country or is there the remains of the consideration or nepotism? He said, I believe that Nigeria belongs to all of us, so we must ensure that there is no section that is denied the right of participation in nation building. Obasanjo did well during his administration. Jonathan, my brother, also did well. Obasanjo even gave secretary to the government of the Federation slots to Aqua Ibon State. Since this government came, I I am yet to see anybody who is from this section of the country that is in the kitchen cabinet of the president. Also, a lot of people thought former president Jonathan didn't know what he was doing on the problem of Boko and that president Buari would deal with Boko insurgency the same way he dealt with uh, Matassin when he was a military head of state, but today Boko has overrun the resources of the nation. All said and done, 21 years of democracy is better than being in 21 years of dictatorship. In democracy, governments, the freedom, a, a democratic government, the freedom of speech must be properly practiced or allowed. For those of us that believe 
in the doctrine of pure democracy, the views of the elected and the non-elected should be respected. I am happy that we have reached 21 years of democracy and we are and we will continue because it is the best form of government. In a democratic process, people change those who run the affairs of the nation based on their philosophy or ideas. So if the ideas of this APC government do not take Nigeria to the next level, they promised Nigerians will look for alternative. That means we will return to the PDP in 2023. What do you think could be done to salvage the country of the to salvage the economy of the country. He said, we need the right people to reposition our economy instead of putting square pegs in round holes. Because of political sentiment, we always throw away our best brains like Okinjiwala that could help reposition the economy. And the president must be someone who is focused to be able to chart a direction for the nation. So the president should, president should uh, to tell us where are we going in education, agriculture, industry, and so on? We are not seeing that happening yet. We have not seen that happening yet. That is the truth. It's supposed to give us direction where to go. Nigerian government must be honest and holistic in its approach in ensuring that during the post-COVID-19 era, we are able to reposition our economy. And the diversification of our economy is important. Agriculture is important. Also, we have to define mining and not to continue to talk about the hypothesis of mining every day. We must in practice ensure that mining is conducted and the process brought to the national coffers instead of depending only on crude oil and vats. So we should think of the gold in Zamfara, the tin ore in Plato State, the uranium in Borno. We have also ensured that we start now to harvest the butume that was found in Ondo for many years. Also, we must ensure that states are given the opportunity to develop at their own pace. For instance, Aquaibon wants to develop its seaport. Why are you not giving it to the authority? A state wants to build a refinery. You don't give them the opportunity. As all they are doing is killing the desires of any state that wants to set up, to get up. It is wrong. State must be encouraged by the federal government. In America, the federal government intervenes based on quantum of jobs that they are doing. But in our situation, everything is being handled by the center. The center is taking charge of agricultural health, and that is why we are unable to handle COVID-19 pandemic. If we had allowed the states to develop their healthcare system, ranging from primary healthcare centers, why we are fighting community infrastructures on this COVID-19. People would have gone to their primary health centers to be tested, to be educated. There should be diversification. Apart from diversifying the economy, the federal government should develop power with corresponding resources, allow the state to generate the money and bring part of the money that's generated to the center. The center should just manage few things like foreign affairs, the army, and then in managing education, federal government should prescribe the form, how it should look like, the minimum standard that each state should develop educationally. The essence of government is to provide security, food, and opportunities for the citizens. Security is not about matching the army against criminal elements. Security is about knowing how many people you are governing. I thought by now, this government led by President Buhari would have conducted a true census. By World Bank projection, we are about 220 million people in 2020. Where are they situated? The demographic entities of Nigeria should be well established to know bona fide Nigeria citizens. From where we should be able, from there we should be able to know how many are educated, what are they doing, how many are farmers, what kind of farming are they doing, what is their income? Then, for those that are um, unemployed, what do we do to mitigate their sufferings? It would have been very easy for you to give palliatives like what we are doing now due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And how can you, for instance, give palliatives like we are doing today to people you don't know and the population you don't have? Hmm. 
as a prominent leader in the country in this country do you agree with the opinion that could oil that without crude oil there would be nothing like nigeria he said i think we should have learned our lessons from what has just happened in this coronavirus pandemic the more reason our governors should look inward and think something beyond oil that is why love i love Governor Kowa of Delta State, Wiki of River State, and former Governor of Bayesa State, who just left office, Dixon. They are always thinking of something outside oil. My own Governor, Udo Emanuel, as an investment banker, has never relied on oil. He is always preaching that this oil will dry one day. So he is already thinking, he's already thinking ahead, and I love what he's doing. And I am believing that one day God will be so annoyed that he gave all gave us oil to the people here but we have been subjugated marginalized in the sharing of the process and in the management of the resources when god's annoyance comes there will be no way you can stop god there's no way you can stop god the oil resources are gotten from here but people over there do not suffer from the effects of acid rain people somewhere that don't suffer from the devastation of the environment are benefiting from what from it. Look at Ogoniland. They said they were going to clean up Ogoniland since 2015. Has it been done? Has Ogoniland been clean? Is there any restoration restoration of our environment? So when this whole area has been completely destroyed as a result of oil drilling, is that when they will now go? So it is a question because of oil resources. It is a forced marriage where they say you must remain with me until when whenever i say i am tired of you but i say god will decide things very soon recently the united states repatriated 311 million dollars of abacha loot to nigeria and the federal government listed some road projects the money will be useful do you agree with the with, with some prominent nigerians that the money should have been shared among the state you said the listed road project, but did they mention Calabar, Itsu Road, Portacos, Ikotekwene, the uncompleted east-west road? Then they did not. So is the presidential president fair? That is one of those things that we are talking about, and that's the question this man is asking. And I am not also in support that the money should be shared because Abacha's loot didn't Abacha didn't loot from the process of Kano. Abacha looted from money from oil seas. The people who suffer from the negative impact of oil exploration, acid rain as a result of flood gas. What is their benefit? So the president has to show statesmanship by ensuring that equity prevails in sparing, spreading such money that he has recouped. But then, is the Abacha loot the only one that people have looted in this country when mr president came in 2015 he said he was going to fight corruption that if we don't fight corruption corruption will destroy nigeria but what happened i think the government should define the rights of everybody define the rights of the citizen the rights of the operators of government and also provide good governance for the people hmm. this is a, a very very uh a deep one Okay, do you see lessons from COVID-19 bringing about restructuring of Nigeria's economy? You said a lot of people are afraid of restructuring. They think that when we talk about restructuring, it is to December, dismember Nigeria. Even if it comes to that level, why should we be afraid? The heavens will not fall. Most of nations of the world that did that, 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 uh, that, did that like Ukraine today, are they not surviving? Ukraine came out of Russia, Republic of Croatia from yugoslavia why is it that in nigeria we are so afraid if you want to restructure nigeria now based on regions some people will not allow that for instance south south southeast were together before independence it was in 1967 that they brought the issue of state creation and the essence of state creation was to give strength to live your life grow at your pace as a state but i have not seen the state living their lives they still carry plates to Abuja to be fed. So if we are talking about restructuring, let every state grow at its own pace using whatever available resources that it has. For instance, if you can produce potato and onions, go into such production, produce them well to grow your economy. 
So guys, I let us hear your opinion concerning what this man has said. He has said many, many things. Please leave your comment below and let's have your own opinion concerning this. Thank you.